conductor's main job is to be the chief listener in the room. So if I'm just standing and listening and, and looking and, and being responsive to what I'm hearing, then I'm able to communicate a great deal with the choir about where they should be going. There's this wonderful interplay where I'm giving the signals that, needed, that the choir needs in order to know what's coming next, but at the same time giving them a feedback and a response for what they just gave me or sang to me so that they can know how they did. All of this is happening in real time, <laughs> so when you put it together, choral conducting is really quite a special phenomenon. You want there to be a connection, as though there is some kind of an umbilical cord between the conductor and the choir. You know, the choir is the voice of the conductor. It's a single voice, whether there's 30 people in the choir or 100 people in the choir, they're still supposed to be singing as one voice. And that can happen if the conductor is really connecting with the singers. Today we will be examining a very important piece in the choral orchestral repertoire, the sacred service of Darius Mio, commissioned in 1947. Uh, this is the uh, final lecture recital. Uh, this is the culmination project for the doctoral program. I started the doctoral program back in 2010, and now this is uh, about three years later, and uh, I'm glad to finally make it to this point. Uh, at the end of the process, we have a lecture and a recital, which is happening today, and then a final document. The title of this lecture is the influence of the Reformed Jewish movement and religious beliefs on text setting in Darius Mio's Servis Sacre from 1947. For the time being, this seems to be a pinnacle both for me as a musician and me as a minister. I'm excited to see how it all turns out today. <laughs> According to author and scholar Ismar Elbogen, quote, Jewish liturgy has unparalleled importance in the history of religions, end quote. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Hebrew sacred service provides the foundation and texts for an important body of choral literature. Like the Roman Catholic Mass, the Hebrew sacred service has been set in a wide range of musical styles and with a diversity of performing forces. Both masses and sacred services can be performed as unaccompanied chant, by unaccompanied choir, choir with organ, or full choral orchestral works for large forces. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. They can be performed either in houses of worship or in concert halls. Of course, there is a biblical tradition of Jewish choral music that dates back to the times of King David. However, in modern Judaism, the choral tradition has only existed for about 200 years. The name of the piece is Sacred Service by Darius Mio. It was commissioned around 1947. And this is just a, it's a magnificent piece. It's a setting of the reformed Jewish liturgy. So the words come straight out of a Jewish liturgical book. Uh, both in Hebrew and there are certain parts in English as well. Overall, the sacred service genre is deserving of further research. Yet musical settings of the Jewish liturgy contain some of the most magnificent compositional moments in the choral repertoire. 
The present research hopes to celebrate and highlight the sacred service genre while focusing specifically on Mio's work from 1947. Darius Mio holds a distinctive place in the 20th century music literature through his unique mixture of styles and deeply intimate compositional craft. Whether it be the use of polytonality, incorporation of jazz idioms, extended harmonies, or the settings of ancient text with modern compositional styles, Mio combines both new and old musical ideas to form an intriguing sound. Mio intentionally progressed on a different philosophical path than that of Impressionism or the symbolist poets of the time. Aspects of Mio's Servi Sacre, especially with regard to text setting, that have been puzzling to scholars who have focused on his Jewish heritage, can be explained in terms of Mio's broad religious background, which incorporated both traditional Jewish teaching and elements of Christianity. He was Jewish. Uh, born and raised Jewish, and it was a very important part of his heritage. At the same time, uh, my understanding is that he was open-minded uh, toward Christian theology, and that's actually part of the thesis that I'm sharing today, that there seems to be aspects of this particular piece that when you interpret them from a, a way that includes Christian theology, as a possible perspective or mindset, the music makes so much more sense. A sacred choral work must be placed in the proper historical and religious context in order to be understood fully. Regarding Mio's sacred service, Reform Judaism is an important piece of the framework. Mio held a passionate reverence for his Jewish heritage. The opening statement of his autobiography gives insight into which aspects of his background were most important to him. Quote, I am a Frenchman from Provence and by religion a Jew. End quote. I'm glad to finally have this opportunity to have studied it and learn more about it and hopefully to make a lecture recital that'll help inspire others to look more deeply into Mio's choral repertoire. Mio's deep connection with his Jewish heritage was a crucial element when he proceeded to set the full Hebrew liturgical service. An interview with his wife revealed that when setting a sacred text, Mio felt the, quote, weight of responsibility, end quote, toward the liturgy. In a separate interview by Roger Nichols, when asked if her husband was religious, Madeline replied, quote, yes, profoundly. He had a blind faith. His religious feelings come out very clearly, I think, if you listen to his religious works. If you listen closely to his sacred service, I feel his humility comes out, his relationship with his creator." End quote. That, that this lecture recital is proving is that there are certain aspects of this Jewish liturgical piece that can be better understood with the open-mindedness of a Christian perspective. Mio's wife felt that there was an appreciation in her husband's world view for elements of Christian theology. She continued, quote, contrary to what a large part of the public thinks, composers feel free to go down quite varied paths. The essential thing is to believe in what you express, 
For example, Darius wrote a Te Deum in 1946 as part of his third symphony as well as a sacred service from Jewish liturgy, end quote. His wife said of him that he, quote, would not take a commission for a mass, but would for psalm settings that affect both Christians and Jews, end quote. Furthermore, the intended message for his opera Esther of Carpentras, quote, was to show that Christians and Jews could live together with different cultures side by side and still be at peace, end quote. Darius Mio is not here for us to ask him point blank, is this exactly what you were doing here? And it's, there's, there are not writings saying, I meant to say this at this point. But if you keep putting the two plus two plus two plus two together, this is what it seems like the, what the sum is of those parts. The significance of the text as it relates to the music is at the center of the present research. This will lead to an unveiling of a clearer understanding for the compositional choices Mio made in Servi Sacre. Ultimately, my desire is to present research that will culminate in a more meaningful and artistic performance of this significant piece of Jewish choral repertoire. Considering the liturgical text as a whole, there are many sections that deal with the topic of giving praise and honor to God. Additionally, certain passages deal with the importance of following the instructions given in the scriptures. Yet there are only select portions of text that address the topics of salvation and redemption within the traditional Hebrew liturgy. Significant insights into the meaning of Mio's Servi Sacre can be gained through clearer understanding of the expressive musical setting of these texts in relation to the Reformed Jewish faith and Mio's own personal beliefs. One such section of text is found in the Amidah prayer, which is movement six. Praised be thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, great, mighty, and exalted, Thou bestowest loving kindness upon all thy children. Thou rememberest the devotion of the fathers. In thy love thou bringest redemption to their descendants for the sake of thy name. Thou art our king and help, our savior and protector. Praised be thou, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Eternal is thy power, O Lord, thou art mighty to save. Who is like unto thee, almighty God, author of life and death, source of salvation. Praised be thou, O Lord, who is implanted within us eternal life. What is Mio communicating through this movement? And is the fugue actually a distraction from the text? As mentioned before, key words in this text include loving kindness, redemption, savior, and the phrase source of salvation. In Mio's setting of the text, these key words to be spoken by the recitant, lie right above entrances of the subject theme at measures 5, 10, 15, and 30. Mio very specifically highlights the salvation type words in the text with the fugal writing. It is not that the fugue distracts from the text. On the contrary, this fugal composition and the counterpoint of the musical lines send the message about the working out of the salvation and redemption of Israel. Mio uses the fugue intentionally to help express the meaning of the text in this passage. Therefore, from a conducting standpoint, it is imperative that the recitant align the words spoken with the text underlay that Mio so deliberately provided. Movement 5, Sur Yisrael, is for cantor and or orchestra or organ. As you see in your lecture notes, the text states Rock of Israel, rise up to help Israel. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is God's name. The Holy One of Israel, blessed are you, God, who redeemed Israel. According to traditional Orthodox commentaries, Sor Yisrael, or Rock of Israel, refers to the coming of redemption, or Messiah. On such a phrase as, rise up, one might expect Mio to take the opportunity for a text painting. Does this melody rise up at this point? No. Instead, there seems to be quite the opposite. The melody is counterintuitive with a broader understanding of Mio's religious ideas 
the text painting makes perfect sense. It seems that Mio is text painting this messianic passage with a feeling of suffering. The orchestral melodies are dying out and creeping downward. The text painting on the word rise up actually falls down. Finally, at the end of this movement, Mio moves toward a D minor cadence, yet then unexpectedly adds a ninth to the final chord, causing unsettledness. All of this musical information seems to suggest a very well-crafted picture of a suffering Messiah as opposed to a triumphant one. It seems plausible that Mio is painting an image in this movement that more closely affiliates with the Christian image of Messiah than that of traditional Judaism. Let us listen to just the f first six measures of this movement. These explanations of movement five and six, Sur Yisrael and Amidah, show how aspects of Mio's Servi Sacre, especially with regard to text setting, that have been puzzling to scholars who have focused on his Jewish heritage, can be explained in terms of Mio's broad religious background, which incorporated both traditional Jewish teachings and elements of Christianity. With that, I would now like to invite the Arizona Choir, organist, and soloists to the stage for a musical demonstration of selections from Darius Mio's Service Sacre. I'm glad to finally have this opportunity to have studied it and learn more about it and hopefully to make a lecture recital that'll help inspire others to look more deeply into Mio's choral repertoire. <laughs> 